everyone. Welcome to the AWS Partner Showcase, Season 1, Episode 3, Women in Tech. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. We've got two female rock stars here with me next. Stephanie Curry joins us, the Worldwide Head of Sales and Go-to-Market Strategy for AWS at NetApp. And Danielle Greshock is back, one of our Cube alum, ISV PSA Director at AWS. Looking forward to a great conversation, ladies, about a great topic. Stephanie, let's go ahead and start with you. Give us an overview of your story, how you got into tech and what inspired you. Thanks so much, Lisa and Danielle. It's great to be on the show with you. Um, thank you for that. Uh, my name is Stephanie Curry, as Lisa mentioned. I'm the worldwide head of sales for uh, AWS at NetApp and run a global team of salespeople that sell all things AWS. Um, going back 25 years now, uh, when I first started my career in tech, it was kind of by accident. Um, I come from a different background, I have a business background and a technical background from school, um, but had been in a different career and I had an opportunity to try something new. Um, I had an ally really that reached out to me and said, hey, you'd be great for this role. And I thought I'd take a chance, I was curious. Um, and uh, it, it turned out to be a 25 year career um, that I'm really, really excited about and, and uh, really thankful for that person for introducing me to the, to the industry. 25 years and counting, I'm sure. Danielle, we've talked about your background before. So what I want to focus on with you is the importance of diversity for high performance. I know how, what a machine AWS is. And Stephanie, I'll come back to you with the same question. But talk about that, Danielle, from your perspective, that importance um, for diversity to drive the performance. Yeah, I truly believe that, you know, in order to have high performing teams that you have to have people from all different types of backgrounds and experiences. And we do find that oftentimes being, you know, field facing, if we're not reflecting our customers and connecting with them deeply um, on, on the levels that they're at, we, we end up missing them. And so for us, it's very important to bring people of lots of different technical backgrounds, experiences, and of course, both men, women, and underrepresented minorities, and put that forth to our customers um, in order to make that connection and to end up with better outcomes. So, Definitely, it's all about outcomes. Stephanie, your perspective and NetApp's perspective on diversity for creating highly performant teams and organizations? I'm really aligned with Danielle on the comments she made. And in addition to that, you know, just from building teams in my um, career, you know, we've had three times as many women on my team since we started a year ago. And our results are really showing in that as well. Um, we find the teams are stronger. They're more collaborative. And to Danielle's point, really reflective of not only our partners, but our customers themselves. So this really creates connections, which are really, really important to scale our businesses and, and really uh, meet the customer where they're at as well. So huge proponent of that ourselves and really finding that we have to be intentional in our hiring and intentional in how we attract diversity to our teams. So Stephanie, let's stay with you. So a 3x increase in women on the team in a year, especially the kind of last year that we've had is really incredible. I, I like your I, your thoughts on there needs to be a, there needs to be focus and and thought in how teams are hired. Let's talk about attracting and retaining those women now, especially in sales roles. We all know the number the percentages of women in technical roles, but what are some of the things that that you do, Stephanie, that NetApp does to attract and retain women in those sales roles? The, the attracting part is really interesting. And we find that, you know, you, you read the stats and I'd say in my experience, they're also true in the fact that um, a lot of women would look at a job description and say, I can't do 100% of that. So I'm not even going to apply. With the women that we've attracted to our team, we've actually intentionally reached out and targeted those people in a good way um, to say, hey, we think you've got what it takes. Some of the feedback I've got from those women are, gosh, I didn't think I could ever get this role. I didn't think I had the skills to do that. And they've been hired and they are doing a phenomenal job. In addition to that, I think a lot of the feedback I've got from these hires are, hey, it's an aggressive, sales is aggressive, sales is competitive. It's not an environment that I think I can be successful in. And what we've shown them is bring those softer skills around collaboration, around connection, around building teams. And they do, they do bring a lot of that to the team. Then they see others like them there and they know they can be successful because they see others like them on the team. 
the whole concept of we can't be what we can't see, but we can be what we can see is so important. You said a couple things, Stephanie, that really stuck with me. And one of them was an inter interview on the cube I was doing, I think a couple weeks ago, um, about women in tech. And the stat that we talked about was that women will apply, will not apply for a job unless they meet 100% of the skills and the requirements that it's listed, but men will if they only meet 60. And I, that just shocked me that I thought, you know, I, I can understand that imposter syndrome is real. It's a huge challenge, but the softer skills, as you mentioned, especially in the last two years, plus the ability to communicate, the ability to collaborate are incredibly important to, to drive that performance of, of any team of any business. Absolutely. Danielle, talk to me about your perspective in AWS as well for attracting and retaining talent and, and, and particularly in some of those challenging roles like sales and, as Stephanie said, can be known as aggressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my team is focused on the technical aspect of the field, and we definitely have an uphill battle for sure. Um, two things we are focused on, first and foremost, is looking at early career women and that how we how can we bring them into this role, whether in, they're in support functions, uh, like answering the phone for support calls, et cetera, and how, how can we bring them into this organization, which is a bit more strategic, more proactive. Um, and then the other thing that as far as retention goes, you know, sometimes there will be women who they're on a team and there are no other women on that team. And, and for me, it's about building community inside of AWS and being part of, you know, we have women at solution architecture organizations. We have, uh, you know, I just personally connect people as well. and am like, oh, you should meet this person. Oh, you should talk to that person. Because again, sometimes they can't see someone on their team like them and they just need to feel anchored, especially as we've all been, you know, kind of stuck at home um, during the pandemic, just being able to make those connections with women like them has been super important. And just being a, a long tenured Amazonian, um, that's definitely one thing I'm able to, to bring to the table as well. That's so important and impactful and spreads across organizations in a good way. Daniel, let's stick with you. Let's talk about some of the allies that you've had, sponsors, mentors that have really made a difference. And I said that in past tense, but I also mean in present tense, who are some of those folks now that really inspire yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I definitely would say that one of my mentors and someone who uh, ha has been a sponsor of my career has uh, Matt Yanchishin, who is one of our Control Tower GMs. He has really sponsored my career and definitely been a supporter of mine and pushed me in positive ways, which has been super helpful. And then other of my business partners, you know, Sabina Joseph, who's a CUBE alum as well. She definitely has been, was a fabulous partner to work with. Um, and, you know, between the two of us for a period of time, we definitely felt like we could, you know, conquer the world. It's very great to go in with a, with another strong woman, um, you know, and, and get things done um, inside of an organization like AWS. Yes. Absolutely. And as Sabine, I've, had, I've interviewed her several times. So Stephanie, same question for you. You talked a little bit about your kind of one of your uh, original early allies in the tech industry, but talk to me about allies, sponsors, mentors who have and continue to make a difference in your life. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's a great differentiation as well, right? Because I think that mentors teach us, sponsors show us the way and allies make room for us at the table. And that is really, really key difference. I think also as women leaders, we need to make room for others at the table too, and not forget those softer skills that we bring to the table. Some of the things that Danielle mentioned as well about making those connections for others, right? And making room for them at the table. Um, some of my allies, a lot of them uh, are men. Uh, Brian Abig was my first mentor. Uh, he actually is in the distribution, was in distribution uh, with Abnet Tech Data, no longer there. Um, Corey Hutchinson, who's now at HashiCorp, he's also another uh, ally of mine and remains an ally of mine, even though we're not at the same company any longer. Um, so a lot of these people transcend careers and transcend um, um, different positions that I've held as well and make room for us. And I think that's just really critical when we're looking for allies and when allies are looking for us. 
I love how you described allies, mentors, and sponsors, Stephanie, and the difference. I didn't understand the difference between a mentor and a sponsor until a couple of years ago. Do you talk with some of those younger females on your team so that when they come into the organization and maybe they're fresh out of college or maybe they've transitioned into tech so that they can also learn from you and understand the importance and the difference between the allies and the sponsors and the mentors? Absolutely. And I think that's really interesting because I do take uh, an extra uh, approach and extra time to really reach out to the women that have joined the team. One, I want to make sure they stay, right? I don't want them feeling, hey, I'm alone here and I need to I need to go do something else. Um, and they are located around the world on my team. They're also different age groups, so early in career as well as more senior people. And really reaching out, making sure they know that I'm there, but also, as Danielle had mentioned, connecting them to other people in the community that they can reach out to for those same opportunities and making room for them. Make room at the table, it's so important. And it can, you never know what a massive difference and impact you can make on someone's life. And I, and I bet there's probably a lot of mentors and sponsors and allies of mine that would be surprised to know uh, the massive influence they've had. Danielle, back over to you, let's talk about some of the techniques that you employ, that AWS employs to make the work environment a great place for women to really thrive and and be retained as Stephanie was saying of course that's so important yeah I mean definitely I think that the community building as well as we have a bit more programmatic mentorship um, we're trying to get to the point of having a more programmatic sponsorship as well um, but I think just making sure that um, you know both everything from uh, recruit to onboard to everboarding that uh, they they're the women who come into the organization, whether it's they're coming in on the software engineering side or the field side or the sales side, that they feel as though they have someone uh, working with them to help them drive their career. Those are the key things that were I think from an organizational perspective are happening across the board. Um, for me personally, when I run my organization, I'm really trying to make sure that people feel that they can come to me at any time, open door policy, make sure that what they're surfacing any times in which they are feeling excluded or anything like that, any challenges, whether it be with a customer, a partner, or with a colleague. Um, and then also, of course, just making sure that I'm being a good sponsor uh, to, to people on my team. Um, that is key. You, you can talk about it, but you have to start with yourself as well. That's a great point. You, you've got to, to start with yourself and really reflect on that and, mm -hmm. and look, am I, am I embodying what it is that I need and not that I know they need? That focused, thoughtful intention on that is so important. Sophie, let's talk about some of the techniques that you use, that NetApp uses to make the work environment a great place for those women or marginalized um, communities to really thrive. Yeah, and I appreciate it. And it, it much like Danielle uh, and much like AWS, we have some of those more structured programs, right, around sponsorship and around mentorship. Um, probably some growth there opportunities for allies, because I think that's more of a newer concept in really an informal structure around the allies, but something that we're growing into at NetApp. Um, on my team personally, I think um, leading by example is really key. And unfortunately, a lot of the um, life stuff still lands on the women. Whether we like it or not, uh, I have a very uh, active husband in our household, but I still carry when it push comes to shove, it's on me. Um, and I want to make sure that my team knows it's okay to take some time and do the things you need to do with your family. Um, I'm, I show up as myself authentically and I encourage them to do the same. So it's okay to say, hey, I need to take a personal day. I need to focus on some stuff that's happening in my personal life this week. Now, obviously, make sure your job's covered, but just allowing some of that softer vulnerability to come into the team as well so that others, um, men and women, can feel they can do the same thing and that it's okay to say, I need to balance my life and I need to do some other things alongside. Um, so it's the formal programs, making sure people have awareness on them. Um, I think it's also softly calling people out on biases and saying, hey, I'm not sure if you know this landed that way, but I just wanted to make you aware. And usually the feedback is, oh my gosh, I didn't know. And could you coach me on something that I could do better next time? So all of this is driven through our NetApp formal programs, but then it's also how you manifest it on the teams that we're leading. Absolutely. And sometimes having that mirror to reflect into can be really eye-opening and, and allow you to, to see things in a completely different light, which is great. Um, you both talked about 
um, kind of being what you uh, can see. And, and I know both companies are obsessed, customer obsessed in a good way. Talk to me a little bit, Danielle, go back over to you about the AWS NetApp partnership. Um, some of that maybe alignment on, on performance, on obviously you guys are very well aligned uh, in terms of that, but also it sounds like you're quite aligned on diversity and inclusion. Well, we definitely do. We have the best partnerships with companies in which we have these value alignments. So I think that is a positive thing, of course. But just from a from a partnership perspective, you know, from my five now plus years of being a part of the APN, this is, you know, one of the most significant years with our launch of FSX for NetApp um, with that uh, key key service, which we're making available natively on AWS, I, I can't think of a better testament to the to the um, partnership than that. And that's doing incredibly well. And it really resonates with our customers. And of course, it started with customers and their need for NetApp. Uh, so, you know, that is a reflection, I think, of the success that we're having together. And Stephanie, talk to uh, about the partnership from your perspective NetApp, AWS, what you guys are doing together, cultural alignment, but also your alignment on really bringing diversity in to drive performance. Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I have to say, it's just been a phenomenal year. Our relationship has uh, started before our first party service with FSXN, but definitely just um, uh, the trajectory um, between the two companies since the announcement about nine months ago has just taken off to a, a new level. Um, we feel like an extended part of the family. We work together seamlessly. A lot of the people on my team often say, we feel like Amazonians. Um, and we're really part of this transformation at NetApp from being that storage hardware company into being an ISV and a cloud company. And we could not do this without the partnership with AWS and without the uh, first party service of FSXM that we've recently released. Um, I think that those joint values that Danielle referred to are critical to our success. Um, starting with customer obsession and always making sure that we are doing the right thing for the customer. We coach our team teams all the time on if you are doing the right thing for the customers, you cannot do anything wrong. Just always put the customer at the, in the center of your decisions. And I think that there is um, a lot of best practice sharing and collaboration as we go through this change. And I think a lot of it is led by the diverse backgrounds that are on the team, um, female, male, uh, race, and so forth. And just to really uh, have different perspectives and different experiences about how we approach this change. Um, so we definitely feel like a part of the family. Uh, we are absolutely loving uh, working with the AWS team. And our team knows that we are the right place at the right time with the right people. I love that. Last question for each of you. And I want to stick with you, Stephanie. Advice to your younger self. Think back 25 years what advice would you see what you've accomplished and maybe the the turns and, and serendipitous route that you've taken along the way? What would you advise your younger Stephanie self? I would say keep being curious, right? Keep being curious. Keep asking questions. And sometimes when you get a no, it's not a bad thing. It just means not right now. And find out why and, and try to get feedback as to why maybe that wasn't the right opportunity for you. But, you know, just go for what you want, continue to be curious, continue to ask questions and find a support network of people around you that want to help you because they are there and they, are, they want to see you be successful too. So never be shy about that stuff. Absolutely. And I always say failure does not have to be an, a bad F word. A no can be the beginning of something amazing. Danielle, same question for you. Thinking back to when you first started in your career, what advice would you give your younger self? Yeah, I think the advice I'd give my younger self would be don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, it's certainly, you know, coming from an engineering background, maybe you want to stay behind the scenes, not not do a presentation, not do a public speaking event, those types of things. But back to what the community really needs is think, um, you know, I genuinely now uh, took me a while to realize it, but I realized I needed to put myself out there in order to, um, you know, allow younger women to see what they could be. So that would be the advice I would give. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Absolutely. That advice that you both gave are, is so fantastic, so important, and so applicable to everybody. Um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Ask questions, 
Don't be afraid of a no. That it's all going to happen at some point or many points along the way, but it can also be good. So thank you, ladies. You inspired me. I appreciate you sharing what AWS and NetApp are doing together to strengthen diversity, to strengthen performance, and the advice that you both shared for your younger selves was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the AWS Partner Showcase. See you next time.